In this video, we're going to look at the on for you uh, wall light motion sensor. Um, there's an LED light, which is a 500 lumens or 5000 lumens rather. Um, I've got the EU HS1 model. Uh, I'm assuming that's for the EU. Uh, it's a 50 watt light fitting. And just going through some of the specs here, uh, it's 5000 K as well, which is the color. And its IP rating is IP44. Interestingly enough, they tell you how much it would cost to run per year here. Uh, so based on three hours per day, it's going to cost you £15 per year to use this particular fitting. So basically you have a main fitting with three adjustable lights on the front of it and your standard PIR, which is adjustable for whatever you need, the distance wise. I think the normal rated distance for, you, for a PIR is 12, 12 and a half metres, I believe. It doesn't say on the box anywhere, but that's normally the case. But let's get straight into the unboxing. So what do we have in the box? So we've got a uh, warranty card here on the top. This is the uh, back plate. It's got like a foam seal that goes around the outside. We have the instruction manual, plenty of different languages on here. We have the light itself. Now we've got the pills on the uh, the glass fronts. Yeah, there's obviously three lights, all with a cluster of LEDs on them. And yeah, you can undo this thumb turn here that allows you to adjust the, the light itself and it's the same process for these uh, these outer fittings And the PIR itself, you can adjust as needed. Inside you've obviously got your standard three cables, live neutral enough, and just some fixings. So it comes with three fixing screws and you've got a uh, large allen key that goes through the centre of the fitting uh, and also an allen key is provided. So for this bit we're just going to go through how to do a proper safe isolation. So first of all with any isolation we check that it's live before we start. So as you can see it's live. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our fuse board and we're going to look for a breaker that's normally going to have either 6 or 10 amp print on it, uh, which will be denoted by probably B6 or B10, and that'll be a lighting circuit. But we'll turn that off. Hopefully it'll be marked up to what you want, but if not, we'll find out by testing. So now, as you can see, there's no voltage on that. Now the problem with this is we don't know whether the tester has failed in the process uh, in the time that we've switched that off. So 
we're going to use it against the live source to make sure that the tester is still working. So you can either use a approving unit, or as I know that the incoming to this is obviously live still, even though the, the outgoing I've switched off. So yeah, I can prove that this tester is now still working. Uh, approving unit is probably your best bet. I'll, I'll stick a link in the description uh, to one, which will make your life a little bit easier. But if not, you can use anything you know is live. Next. With any safe isolation, you should be locking off what you're doing. So if you can lock off the cupboard that the um, fuse board's in, then that's best. Otherwise, you can get these little uh, locking tabs that you can stick a padlock through. The idea is that there should only be one key to whatever lock you use. So if you can see, there's a little dimple on the inside of the MCB, or, or the breaker as we call it. Um, and as you push the metal tabs into it and the plastic goes forward, it'll expand and and blocks up that area so that the trip can't be moved or the switch. So now that's prized out, you can no longer push that switch up. And I honestly could not find a bigger padlock apparently, but it's only got one key, so that's the most important thing. And obviously keep that on you at all times. But you know now that there's no way that anyone can switch that on and no one else has got access to the keys to the lock, so it's going to be safe to work on. And that's basic uh, isolation. Next we're going to go through how we're going to install the light. So I'm just going to take these this block off here. So assuming this was your old fitting, you'd just take it apart as you would. Now we can take the base plate and you can screw it through any of these holes. There's plenty of holes there. One of the most important things is you want to get a nice tight fitting because that uh, foam back seal needs to be pushed straight up against the wall for it to make a waterproof seal. I'm just going to take two Phillips screws and screw it through the middle. Um, I'm using the middle screws here because that's where I've got the wood behind it, but I'd probably go to the outer edges if I was you, just to make sure you get a good seal against that foam back. That's fitted and not going anywhere. It's important not to use that middle screw hole because we'll use that later for the Allen key. Next I'm going to throw that terminal block back on. Notice how I never touch the conductors, even though I know it's isolated correctly. It's, uh, it's always a good idea to, to act as in as if everything is live, even when it's not. Or hot, as some people say. And all my tools are rated to a thousand volts. That's why they've got the plastic all the way to the tip. Shouldn't be able to see any copper on the outside. But you should always make sure your screws are touching on the copper, not on the sheath or the plastic outer rim. Yeah, it's important to have this screw and allen key ready at this point. Uh, it'll come in handy in a minute, but it's good to have it ready now. So, on the fitting, it's quite difficult to see, but each of the uh, cables are marked. Uh, that's obviously your earth connection, it's the earth symbol. Uh, and that's your neutral, which is the blue. And brown is your live. It has got it written in text as well. Um, 
so if you've got older colors on your cabling uh the red ca cable will go to your brown uh black cable will go to your blue and green and yellow should always be the same Once again, I want, don't want to see any of the uh, metal, but I don't want the screws to be touching on the, the sheath either. So just want to make sure that if I was to wave my hand across it, I wouldn't be able to touch any metal. You can always do a tug test. So it, the idea is you just pull on each conductor gently, make sure they're not going to come out on their own. Now you want to get the, the terminal block or whatever out of the way of that middle centre of the fitting as you push it back because that's where our screw is going to go through as you'll see in a second. So that large allen key screw can go through the centre there and then we can use the allen key or hex as it's actually called. Uh, hex key to tighten it up and that will push the fitting up against the, the foam backing as well to make a seal around the outside also allows you to adjust it quite difficult to do with a camera in front of it Yeah, so you can level it. Probably by eyes easiest. This is rounded, it won't show. Once you get it nice and tight, you should see the foam sort of right up against the metal around the outside edge. And now's a good time where you can adjust these settings here. So you've got uh, sensitivity, time. So we can just set to whatever you think you're going to need. Um, it's normally best to start with a time at the lowest and then work your way up to whatever you want. And then obviously adjust this to where you think it's going to need to go. And these can bend down in different directions as well, which is quite handy. You could put that right off to the side if you wanted. Now that we're 100% happy that everything's done and all the cables are tied away, we can we can unlock our MCB. Best to uh, what we call load shed first, so you can turn it off with a switch if you've got one. And then by just pulling the tab towards you, it comes out and it goes together. Now we can switch it back on. And obviously, switching the switch on, we get a lot of extra light in the room. Try not to shine it directly at the camera, but um, as you can see, there's plenty of light there. Overall, it's a decent fitting. Um, we've got plenty of adjustment on the these uh, side fittings, um, and there is more than enough light for most instances. Um, Five thousand lumens is a lot, um, so it's going to cover more than the, uh, the the twelve meters that you'd get on your PIR. It's going to light up anyone's garden, I would think, um, unless you've got acres. The only thing I would suggest is if you're the wall that you're installing this to a very textured render or something like that um, I would invest in a little bit of silicon just to run along the top edge it 
does have a seal, uh, like a foam back seal that has, needs to squeeze up against the, the wall uh, to create your waterproof seal. But if the wall is very textured, that might not make. So I, I would suggest just a little bit of silicone, go along the top edge. Um, the idea is if you only go along the top edge, so just in case any water does get in there, you can always escape through the bottom. If you was fitting it on a brick wall or something like that, where you've got the in between the bricks, I would fill that with silicone just to stop any water ingress. Other than that, it's uh, pretty easy to install. The fact that you can turn this down and adjust the settings as you need to quite quickly and easily is, is always a handy feature, um, and that's pretty adjustable. All of it is very, very easy to move about. So hopefully this video has helped you, may, maybe make your decision whether you're gonna buy it or not. Um, or has helped you install it so let us know in the, the comments how you got on and uh, if you've got any questions of uh, of the fitting or how to install it or anything like that uh, we'll try and answer as much as we can if you've enjoyed this content make sure you like and subscribe uh, there'll be plenty more videos in the future about things like this other than that i hope you've enjoyed the video thanks a lot